Then, if you're writing about a joint, take note of the articular surfaces of the joint. So yes, I the... know you have read, you have studied, and you feel prepared for your exams. But <laughs> let me disappoint you a little. Yes, you may have this knowledge on your fingertips, but if you do not know how to present it to your examiners, if you don't know how to present what you know on your exam script, your scores will still be showing you 30% and 40% and 50%. So it is when you know how to put down your thoughts, your knowledge into writing, that is what will now increase your chances of getting the 60s and 70s in your exams. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Jemima and today we are going to be talking about how to answer anatomy questions in exam. This is one of my highly requested videos so I decided to bring it up today and it's going to be in a series. So this week I'm going to talk about how to answer anatomy questions in exam. Next week I'm going to talk about how to answer physiology questions in exam and the other week I'm going to talk about how to answer medical biochemistry questions in exam so it's it's like a series that could help you have those distinctions help you have those 60s and 70s that you want to have yes i know you want to have this course and that is why you're here so sit tight and yes i need to remind you that every wednesdays and saturdays there is always a new video on this channel on wednesdays i post about my personal life everything that is outside medical school my hair journey my emotional struggles my skincare routine but saturdays are for medical school videos only so if you're a medical student you have a vip treatment on saturdays so if this is the kind of content that you like please tap on that subscribe button and subscribe to my channel let's get on with the video people keep saying that anatomy department is very stingy with their scores yes i know they are stingy with marks and do you know why it's because there is so much that is expected of you to write in so little time they already know that it's almost impossible not that i'm using the word almost so it's not impossible completely it's almost impossible for, for a student to be able to write everything that's expected of that student within the time frame that they are given i really do not know about your school but in my school you're given voluminous questions to write in less than two hours so if you know so well you will find yourself spending all the time answering the first two questions and the remaining four or five or six questions you would not have the time to attempt any of them so what i advise and what i do is i make sure i attempt every single question giving just the details the part one and part two of this video is supposed to be just one video but when i was editing it i discovered it's too long it's more than 40 minutes long so i had to cut it into two so this is a part two of the video so if you've not seen the part one of this video please go and see the part one of this video the part one is where i started the video from if you're asked to write about an organ or a blood vessel or if you're asked to write about a canal or a triangle like femoral triangle i explain what is expected of you so i advise you start from there before you watch this video i'll put the link up here so if you have finished watching the part one of this video so you're welcome to see the part two of this video Mwah. And then if you're asked to write about a nerve, like sciatic nerve, or if you're asked to write about a plexus, like the sacral plexus, the cervical plexus, the breakout, mostly breakout plexus. If you're asked to write about a nerve, you start from the origin of the nerve, the nerve root. Is it C5, C6, T1? Take note of this nerve root, especially if you're writing about the, those nerves, like femoral nerve, musculocutaneous nerve, median nerve, all these nerves that come from plexuses take note of their root value then you're asked to write about cranial nerves like the trigeminal nerve the vagus nerve blah 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 blah. take note of their origin that's their nuclei then you now write about the branches of these nerves what do these nerves supply what muscle what organs do these nerves supply take note of that then when you finish writing all of that, write about the clinical anatomy. I forgot to add, if you're writing about a cranial nerve, you also need to indicate if it's a sensory, a motor, or a mixed nerve. It's very important. What happens when there's a lesion on these nerves? What structures or what organs are affected? 
like you know for uh, breakout plexus there's pumpkins paralysis there's Epps paralysis what are the clinical manifestations of these syndromes then if you're writing about a plexus you know most plexus is like the breakout plexus is, it originates from the anterior rami so you take note of this tiny tiny word don't go and write posterior rami you write the post anterior rami of which nerve roots is it from c5 what's the extent of this plexus is it from c5 to t1 is it from s this to you need to take note of this and then if it has cords like breaker plexus that has roots trunk division cord take note of all this and make sure each branch that comes out from the roots you list them each branch that comes out from the trunk you list them let everything be written accordingly you start from the roots the branches are come from the root you know phrenic nerve comes from the root of the breakout plexus like if you can say something about the eps point of the breakout plexus that would be very nice you can just add a note on the eps point the different nerves that form the eps point that would be very nice these are little things that give you your mark so i repeat myself if you're writing about a nerve write about the origin if it's a, if, if it's a cranial nerve write about the nuclei where the nuclei is found if it's a spinal nerve write about what plexus does it come from the nerve root from you write about its course take note of the course of that nerve it's like the journey the journey it goes through to terminate from its origin to its termination what journey does it pass um, posterior to so -so bone or anterior to so -so muscle does it pierce so -so muscle you take note of little things like that so i repeat myself the origin the course the termination the branches and if you're writing about a plexus you write about the different divisions if it's, you start from the root to the trunk to the division to the cords take note of that then the different branches what does it supply and then finally you add the icing on the cake the clinical anatomy if it's a bone that you're writing about you can start from an introduction if it's a part of the appendicular skeleton or a part of the axial skeleton you take note of that then it, after writing your introduction you draw a diagram make sure that whatever diagram you're drawing will show the anterior part of the bone then you also draw another diagram to show the posterior part of the bone there are so many diagrams that can be drawn i'm telling you if, if it's a bone that has a head a neck a shaft take write it down let me use the tibia for example the tibia has a proximal part and a distal part take note of the features of this proximal part take note of the shaft what is the shape of the shaft take note of the distal aspect what are the structures pertaining to the distal aspect take note of the articulation of the bone you cannot write about anything bone in gross anatomy without saying something about the articulation for humerus you know the proximal aspect articulate with the scapula you know the distal aspect articulate with the radius and the honor take note of those things when you write about the articulation or you can say the joints that that bone form you write about that you enter muscle attachments of that bone if you can draw a diagram to show the muscle attachment that will be perfect what muscles originate from that bone what muscles insert on that bone what are the relations of that bone also take note of the ossification of the bone is it endochondrial is it intramembranous what is the blood supply what is the innovation you add a note on clinical anatomy you know anything bone has to do with fracture what happens when there is a fracture of that bone take note of these little little names like smith's fracture the collis fracture take note of that when you use these names like this in your script the examiner will know that ah this person knows what he or she is saying i repeat myself you're writing about a bone the, the introduction the key features of the bone you write the muscle attachments of the bone you write the articulations of the bone you write the blood supply to the bone you write the innovation of the bone you write the clinical anatomy of that bone but if you are writing about a complicated bone like the skull you are asked to write about the middle cranial fossa or anterior cranial fossa or posterior cranial fossa you know when it comes to fossa like this you it has some foramen it has sulcus it has grooves take note of the structures that pass through each foramen if you're writing about the middle cranial fossa and you're writing about the different foramen or the different sulcus start from anterior to posterior 
to write about this foramen. You start from, you no, know, for, for middle Korean first, I start from the optic canal. You, at the optic canal, what structures pass through the optic canal? You know the ophthalmic artery, the optic nerve pass through the optic canal. Write them accordingly from anterior to posterior. List the structures that are found in this fossa. Another thing you need to note is the relations of this fossa. What are the bones that make up this fossa? And if you're listing the bones, make sure if you're listing from medial to lateral, you arrange it from medial to lateral or from anterior to posterior, you arrange it from anterior to posterior. What are the borders, the borders of the bone? The anterior border is formed by so, -so, so bone, the posterior border is formed by so, -so, so bone. Little things that you need to add, even clinical anatomy, like the middle cranial fossa. What happens when there's an injury or trauma to the middle cranial fossa or to the anterior cranial fossa? What could go wrong? Those structures that are found there that can be affected, those vessels, those nerves that pass through the foramen in this fossa, what could what will happen if any of them is compressed? So I repeat, if you're writing about a fossa like the cranial fossa, anterior or medial or posterior cranial fossa, you take note of the formation of the, the fossa, the borders of this fossa, the foramen in the fossa, the structures that pass through the fossa, the structures that are found in the fossa, the clinical anatomy of the fossa. Then if you're writing about a joint, Take note of the articular surfaces of the joint. Take note of the two bones that make up this joint. Take note of the joint capsule. Take note of the ligament. Take note of the blood supply, the venous drainage, the innervation, the bursa. You know, there is subacromial bursa, there is prepatellar bursa. Just depending on whatever joint you're talking about, just make sure you say something about the bursa in that joint. The clinical anatomy of the joint. You start with the introduction, where this joint is found, what kind of joint it is. Is, is it a diatrotic joint or synatrotic joint or amphiatrotic? Take note of the kind of movement that is found in that joint. Is it adduction movement? Is it adduction? Is it for extension? Is it for retraction? Is it for protraction? Take note of the kind of movement that that joint can make. And then write about the stability of the joint. What are the structures that make these joints to be stable? Like you're writing about the shoulder joint, you know the six muscle, the orientation of the tendon of these muscles form a stability for this shoulder joint. Take note of that. The ligaments can also be as a form of stability. The glenoid labrum can be a form of stability for that joint. Just take note of the little things. So I repeat myself. You start from introduction, you draw the diagram, you, you label the diagram, you write the kind of joint it is, the bones that make up this joint, the joint capsule, the ligaments of the joint, the muscles surrounding that joint, and then finally you go into the stability of the joint, the arterial supply, venous drainage, innervation, and the clinical anatomy of the joint. Sorry guys, the video was yet again too long, so on Saturday, I'm going to upload the histology and embryology. I'm going to tell you everything the examiners look for in histology and embryology exams you'd like to see. If you watched this video to this point, I'm really grateful. Thank you so much for watching this video. Remember, every Wednesdays and Saturdays, there is always a new video on this channel. Wednesdays, I post about my personal life, my hair journey, my skincare routine, everything outside medical school, my emotional struggles. But on Saturdays, I post only medical school videos. So if you're a medical student, come back next week Saturday. I am going to do a continuation of this video. I remain Jemima. See you next week Saturday. Bye. Mwah. Remember, remember to like this video if you like it and remember to subscribe to my channel so that you'll be notified when I have a new video.